no um, sequence to it but uh, yeah i'll i'll try to cover both sets together right so um, as we were introduced i'm palak i'm the international student recruitment officer with kings college london i look after india and pakistan so that's briefly about me uh i'll start with some brief information about king so that you know bits about the university and pardon my voice uh it's just down with flu so uh sorry just bear with me with that so we were founded in 1829 uh we've produced 13 nobel laureates so far with the fourth oldest university in england we have not one but five campuses in the very heart of london so this is something that our students are really really find an advantage to We are we are part of the Russell Group. So for those of you who don't know, Russell Group is a is a twenty four group of twenty four research intensive intensive universities in the UK, which are pretty much like the gold standard, or a lot of uh, a lot of people call it as the Ivy League education standard in the UK. So we are part of Russell Group, which is very very focused on research as well. So that's one main component or ethos of the Russell Group. and we were also the founding college of university of london so that's very briefly just to set some context in history with kings uh like i said we've produced 13 nobel laureates so far something that we really take pride in and uh, for details i i mean if you want any details of any of those it's just some of those names are on the screen so uh, just for your reference there this i feel indian students are really obsessed about uh, these stats are really really uh, interest in i mean a lot of students are interested and obsessed with it i would i would tell you that you know uh, take it as a as a navigating tool just to get a broader picture of where the university lies don't get obsessed with one point here and there etc this is not the ideal or the correct way to base your decision on their there are many many factors beyond just rankings that play an important role and that should be part of your concentration to to narrow down on, on a university or the course i would say but for kings uh, as for the latest qs world rankings we are uh, at the top 3 university in london top 10 in the uk and top 35 in the world so uh, that's our rankings the latest ones that are published uh also with subjects uh, or specific course rankings the bigger box that you see on the screen so we i mean we are highly highly ranked with most of our courses so for example dentistry is number 1 in the world nursing is second in the world and number 1 in the uk and so on and so forth so i'm not going to get into much detail but uh, the point across is that we are very very highly ranked with our program so not just university ranking as a whole but also course specific rankings which i feel uh when you're checking out or if you're interested in some particular course understand the university ranking at a whole that is important but also see where that course or ranking lies because that's that's what you would actually study at that particular university um speak about kings community we are a large uh, college so uh, i would say large university i would say so we are we are close to about 34000 students across five campuses uh, of course combined with ug pg and our research courses and interestingly 50% of that figure close to 16000 students are international students from across 185 different countries so we are truly truly an international university we welcome students from about 185 different countries uh, it's a it's a great uh, global learning culture at kings i would say uk uh, in general is very very welcoming uh, and there is uh, no bias with students of any sort etc it's 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 a hub for universities students from all across the world come in and it's it's a very very welcoming place for students to go uh, also kings because uh, uh, kings hosts students from so many different countries so of course you know there are uh, and at the same point from india also across different courses we have about say 500 600 students on campus across different courses and course levels i feel this is a great number where you also feel at home uh, but at the same time you also part of a of a cult, culturally diverse uh, kind of a background which truly is a the learning uh, catalyst you know i have i belong to an international team and i have my team members from different parts of the globe you know some from china us uh, indonesia etc and i feel that you know that that truly adds to your 
exposure and your learning so these are some small things and because university education is not just about studying from books you know that that's now if you're looking for an abroad education just get this out of your head that you know it's not just about books and classrooms etc there's so much more to learn and if you really want to take the maximum exposure uh, of your university education then you have to be out there and use opportunities and, and learn from different aspects i would say this is my favorite slide to speak about this is a central location so uh we have uh, all the red boxes that you see on the screen are either campuses, hospitals, or libraries that are owned and managed by kings. So uh, all the uh, subjects that you see mentioned next to the small red boxes are the subjects that are taught at that particular campus. Now, of course, where you'll be based at depends on what you choose to study. Uh, for some courses, you might also be taught at two different campuses. Um, and uh, but this look this might look very spread out on the screen, but they're all within short bus rides and walking distance from each other. And to be able to stay in central London as a student is a huge opportunity because that has a lot of lot of advantages. So we we touch a few of those in our following slides. All the small purple boxes that you see on the screen are some famous London landmarks, tourist attractions, important institutions, etc., such as the London Eye, the Shard, etc. So. That's there, and London has been voted the number one student city in the world, not once but multiple times in the row now. So um, that's that's some useful things there, and I'm sure those of you who are looking to come to London already know this, which is why it's a it's a great. Uh, also, the post study work visa has of course added to this, but uh, I mean I would suggest if you if you're going anywhere abroad, uh, location is a very important point because as an international student. You get to access those resources. You 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 have to be in the heart to get well connected, etc. Of course, students have different preferences with campus, or university in a city based university, or in the outskirts. So all of those factors are genuine and should be factored in while you're choosing your course or your university. I would say, just to give you a closer look uh, of some of our campuses, this is a Strand campus where law, social science, arts, humanities, computer, and engineering are taught. This is the guys campus, which is a medicine school. So life sciences, medicine and dentistry are taught here. This is an iconic uh, Bush House building where management courses are taught. This is a business school. And this is the Morgan Library, just to give you a view here. These are also some uh, actual pictures of King's campuses. Of course, various uh, shows and movies have been shot here. So, uh, just to give you a, a close sense of the campus, this is, these are some pictures of, of inside view of our campuses. So because we are right in the heart of the city and of course also because not just of our location but because of, of our prestige, we at, uh, attract uh, a lot of high profile visitors. So this is a picture of the Queen when she visited the campus. We also have partnerships with world renowned institutions, links with professional bodies, institutes for example, uh, I mean, uh, the Shakespeare Globe Theatre or uh, our, our law students get to access the PwC Legal Clinic and help them with legal advice. So there's just so much happening. Uh, and it's not just about studying at King's. It's, I mean, all in London, I would say there's so much to do. Follow your passion, try something new. It's, it's a vibrant, vibrant place. There's so much happening. And as long as you can balance your time and and uh, uh, you know you should be out there and availing of these opportunities this comes as a bigger package to your study abroad decision I would say so uh, London has of course been voted the number one student city in the world multiple times in the row and it obviously has some context behind it so London is home to 45 universities of great libraries museums theaters galleries and professional bodies I mean uh, uh, and Kings is so well connected and so centrally located that, you know, our English literature students just walk into, so what they're studying about in their books, they just walk into the museum and galleries in the middle of their classes uh, and they just have a look at it. So it's very, very well connected that way. And there are endless things to do beyond uh, studying, uh, I would say. So London is home to iconic sports venues, tourist attractions, I mean, over two thirds of uh, green trees. So they're about uh, about 100 parks it's a it's a beautiful thing to just sit in a park in London and enjoy your time and it's just, it's just some, I mean something that we usually don't get to experience in India much I would say and London is of course a uh, home to shopping there's Vista Village there's Oxford Street there are different, different kinds of markets there's music venues etc so so much to do uh, in London 
uh, I would say beyond just studying. Some of the reason why our students choose Kings is for uh, we, like I said, so we have a great, great history and legacy. So if you're if you're choosing a university, I would say just to see the kind of uh, alumni the university has produced, uh, the kind of faculty that teaches at the university, all of these decisions should play a role rather than just getting obsessed with rankings or something that your friend or your cousin is, is studying at. So uh, that these are some decisions that will only be evident. I mean, these are some factors that will only be evident with the research you do. So that's important. So we are the fourth oldest university in England, and I've already spoken about uh, how King, I mean, about Kings in the first slide. So I'm not going to touch more on this. So we also, of course, because we're part of the Russell group, but also uh, Kings has a great uh, culture of research. We're very, very actively involved in research. Um, so the 5G technology will soon replace 4G technologies in your cell phones and Kings has a major role to play. We were very, very actively involved in the COVID uh, research and, you know, uh, Boris Johnson was treated at our hospital, uh, 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 one of our hospitals with COVID. So, so all of that is there. Uh, so we're very, very focused on research. We're also the 11th most international university in the world. And um, like I said, we have not one, but five campuses in the heart of London. And because of this, uh, the whole of uh, the city, I would say, feels like your classroom because it's spread across central London and there are five campuses, etc. cetera. So it's, it's that kind of a community. That was briefly about uh, Kings and London. Now, uh, if you choose to study at Kings, what you can study. So I'll play a short video here. Uh, uh, this is basically because I learned that we majorly have a lot of postgraduate students uh, today, but I'll fully touch on undergrad as well, but I'll just play a video for you. Where will a master's from King's College London take you? Whether you want to advance your career, change industry or profession, follow your passion or make a difference, King's can help you. With over 300 graduate courses taught by world-renowned academics and leading industry players, King's is also home to cutting-edge research, making a positive impact. King's is ranked top five in the UK for graduate employability. Studying at King's offers unrivaled networking opportunities, access to high-profile events, world-class facilities, and a global community with global connections, all in the heart of London. Take the next step. Extraordinary futures begin at King's. For more information, visit kcl.ac.uk forward slash postgraduate. Right, so we move ahead. Why um, will I'm so, uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of students tell us that, you know, we want to go to a good university. They're very obsessed with rankings, keenly following, uh, uh, you know, where the university stands, etc. But if, you, if you're looking at a prestigious university that's highly ranked, that also means it's going to be really competitive to get into those universities. And King's, I would say, is one of those universities where I see a lot of students tell us that, you know, King's is our dream college, it's King's is our dream university, etc. Uh, and of course, some courses are more popular than the other. And if you choose to study at a... At, at such a university and with, with, with popular courses, then it's it's extremely important that you submit an application that is competitive now because we are trapped, uh, like, like I've mentioned that, you know, we have students from about 200 different countries. And if you, if you are looking at, uh, uh, I mean, uh, at, at such a university, then it has to be a high quality application. Now, just to give you a sense check of uh, what, what kind of, uh, what I mean when I say competitive, so we have about 150 to 180 courses at King's, uh, and this is not even a very updated figure with the application. This was about, I think, a month and a half, two months ago. So we've received 66,000 applications for those courses. Now, these are obviously not the number of seats that we have on offer, but this is, I mean, far, far, far multifold with the number of seats we have on offer, which means that if you are applying for one of those seats and you have to show the university that you are the right fit and you you have grades etc and let me just put it very clearly that uh, just meeting the minimum entry requirements uh, does not guarantee an offer that's just a prerequisite so things like your personal statements and etc play a very very important role 
and 50% of these applications were just for our popular courses i would say uh business law uh ir psychology engineering uh, data science uh, these sets of courses and the top 3 were business management law and biomedical sciences for this year now my my perspective to show this slide is not to scare you but just to give you a reality check that if you are looking at a prestigious highly ranked university then it becomes really important that that you put a a well drafted personal statement you should have met your grades and in case you are not meeting the minimum entry requirement grades i would say that please um, don't apply because kings is extremely strict with it so you you have to meet Uh, the minimum entry requirement grades that I mentioned on the website, but along with that, you know, you also have to meet the English language test score grades as well. So, uh, be mindful of that because even if you're missing even a single percentage here and there, I've seen kings not considering that. Uh, so you have to be mindful of that. Now, what you can study, of course. we have like i said close to about 200 courses uh, which is why it's not possible to put everything on the screen so uh, we divide them into five broad faculties which is stem that is science technology engineering and math health subjects uh, politics economics and society management finance and law and arts and humanities i've just put in a few uh, courses under each faculty but literally the best place to check this out is the course page now uh, in questions i will request you to not ask uh, what specific uh, entry requirement is needed for what course etc because it's not possible for me want to remember all the 200 courses at the top of my head and secondly all of this information is given on the website so if you're looking to apply for any undergraduate or postgraduate course i'll encourage you to go on the course page on the website the course page will give you all the information in terms of entry requirements career testimonials course structure uh, what exactly is needed for that course because some courses might need uh, so we don't have interviews for most of our courses we only have them for medicine but some courses might need some preferred subjects some courses might need some uh, prerequisite with subjects some courses might need an additional writing piece for example so all of that information will be on the course page on the website so it's very important to check that out before you make an application and you and you double verify if you meet uh, those requirements because some courses for example will for uh, all economics courses for example you will need maths business and management will not need maths in class 12 uh, for example strategic entrepreneurship course will need a quant background so all of these things are important and you must check them out and only make an application in case you fill in those requirements um uh, also we have some interesting uh, interdisciplinary options so you know three year bachelors four year options with integrated study abroad multidisciplinary degree some interesting degree combinations that are unique to kings or i would say uh, not very uh, readily available otherwise so you know something like uh, uh, physics and philosophy or something like uh, you know ppe is is a very 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 popular course recently and it's extremely competitive as well so something like psychology and neurosciences so i'll suggest you you thoroughly do a website research because you might think that you are interested in a management or a business management course but when you actually read through course contents you figure out that no what is taught under economics and management is something that interests me more so all of this is important and don't just go with uh, course names i would say because five different universities might offer the same course called business management what they actually teach under that course will be different right so uh, similar but different so it's important that you see your interest based on what is taught under each course just go through the course module said if you still have some technical questions on you know what is taught how is it taught etc there is a course leaders email id mentioned on the course page just reach them uh, reach the course uh, leaders with that email id will be very happy to share details with you so all of this is possible if you start on time if you if you hit the panic button with deadlines because specifically with ug we follow the ucas deadlines and we are very very strict with those pg is still a little softer deadline in terms that you know if you still have seats that if we don't catch so many quality applications for some courses and we still have seats open that's a little softer deadline but with ug we are very very hard on the deadlines so be mindful of that uh we have about 300 plus study abroad partners for ug so you know you can choose to do a semester abroad or a year abroad uh, so all of this is also given on the course pages to which courses we sorry which courses we give that option so check that out and all the students who opted for study abroad have given some great feedback uh, 
you know it's a great exposure great learning and uh, of course it's i've not put all the 300 parts in the of the screen but uh, this is just to give you that it is spread across all pretty much the, the whole world i would say so that's about our study abroad partners now we come to master courses uh, master also we divided into five broad faculties <laughs> sorry uh, and i've put in some course options under each faculty so uh, there are some you know interesting courses some popular courses some niche courses etc and uh, there's also a barcode on the screen and also i think if i share the link uh, in the chat box if you're interested to know anything about uh, the course you're interested in just fill in in that link and the team will email you course details you will get invited to our events uh, and it's it's a great uh, uh, and a sensible thing you know i think is to attend taster lectures virtual open days etc because they really give you information uh, that that will be useful to take a decision so you know everything might not be available on the website itself but with taster days and uh, we've been having virtual open uh, weeks also so you know you get a sense about that university that that helps you making a decision if you want to do your three years or one year in that particular university so there's also a barcode on the screen if you scan it's going to take you to the course page now, just to get into, you know, how learning, studying, etc. looks at, of course, there's inside classroom, there's outside classroom. London is a whole, I would say, is your classroom because you learn so many things. And then, you know, because London has such great universities, there's so many uh, different students across University of London uh, colleges that, so for example, they all stay together in intercollegiate halls instead of competition. So, you know, you, you share uh, so many learnings with each other. So just so many extra things I would say uh, that happen inside the classroom with different courses, uh, even outside the classroom with say field trips, or like I said, the legal clinic, mooting, uh, business consumption, so much, so much that's there. But that is, if you're looking to study abroad, just get out of this perspective of handholding. I would say there is no concept of handholding in the UK like we have in the Indian system. So if you have to be out there and use all of these opportunities that are there uh, and not expect to be spoon fed or I mean of course there is support but if you're coming and I specifically tell this to Indian students is that you know we've been used to uh, being in a pampered hand holding kind of an environment so if to come out of it that has to be unlearned before you go to the any I would say any foreign or abroad education destination right Any disturbance, Palak? No, I can't uh, move the slides somehow. All right, it's okay from here. Can you just stop sharing and share it again? Um, Apologies for the inconvenience. No, no, that's fine. Stop. Yeah, right. Uh, also, uh, yeah. Uh, it's obviously not just studying at Kings is so much more, but you have to be mindful to balance your time, I would say. So we have one of the oldest uh, uh, student unions and we have 300 plus student societies, about 70 plus sports club and uh, subject specific societies, Indian community, different regional communities. They celebrate all festivals. It's very, Indian community is very, very active. And then uh, subject specific. So for example, like a physics society or a, a social work, dance, you name it and King has it. And even if there's something that you want and it's not there, you can also start a community. So a student union is really active and it's really, really buzzing. And I have seen so many students landing into their dream job because they were part of a society, because they, they uh, organized a lecture or, or something. And then, you know, that's how they network and they got into uh, a job. So all of these things are important uh, if you are looking at uh, a broad education. Now, uh, of course, with careers, we, like I said, there is no concept of job guarantee uh, in in UK or I would say any part of the world beyond India in that matter. So uh, there is a very strong career service division or career placement team. They organize about thousand plus career events in a year. So they they organize CV workshops, guest lectures, networking nights, uh, virtual internship weeks, etc. But you have to be out there and and use those opportunities. So uh, networking is a big thing in London. So you have to get on network, make those connections. Uh, 
and then there's this career hub where all resources and opportunities are shared there are career fairs and workshop like i said so many uh, career development and professional skills classes they they help you organize mock interviews uh, so all of that is is there as a strong support and obviously if you have a uh, i would say a, a good university degree on your cv that's always a plus you know so you don't really have to i would say stress so much about you know if you will find a job if you won't find a job i would say if you work towards it i don't see any reason that you won't land up in a job and specifically after the two years post study work visa has opened up the opportunities have have really uh, started to open up but it's it's important that that you know you prepare yourself for it and and not expect a uh, hand holding for that one so yeah of course we are employable uh, and highly ranked in probability index as well uh of course our graduates are across the globe but i just put in some names and some brands in some countries here to give you a sense so they work across uh, major countries and uh, you know across major brands with multinationals with government uh, with various sectors etc now how do you apply it kings is a uh, for all undergraduate students uh, and even the post graduate the best place like i said is to first check the course page on the website but just to give you a macro perspective uh, for undergraduate if you are an a level student then you must have a star aa to abb in the sense that's the range but what exactly you need depends on the course you're applying for for ib you need 35 points overall and uh, different hl to I mean, different HL combination from six six five to seven six six again, depending on what course you're applying for. CBSE, we usually need eighty five or you know ninety percent. For some courses, it's also eighty, but the uh, competitive uh, popular courses will obviously be about eighty five to ninety percent. Uh, for state board students, you can't apply directly to a three year program. So you will have to apply through the international foundation one year program. Uh, for English language test scores. You can give either the IELTS or for the PTE. Now, if you are an A level or an IB student, you might be exempted from the test. Uh, it's on case to case basis, but for CBSE students, it's mandatory to give that. And you don't need this is for both U UG and PG. You don't necessarily need these scores while making an application. You can go ahead and make an application and then uh, submit these scores later. So this is just broadly with entry requirements. Now, how do you apply for undergraduate? It's it's through UCAS for for UG. So, of course, UCAS is five choices. One person statement is a fee. Be mindful of the deadlines. Uh, if fifteenth October is for medicine courses, which is already passed for this year, twenty six January is for all other courses. And what we need is predicted person statements, academic report, just tenth in your predicted. And usually with undergrads, it's just one reference. Now, a lot of students ask us that. Uh, do we submit additional things etc honestly the team is very is literally swamped with applications they barely look any addition at any additional things so i i mean if even if you submit there's no guarantee they'll even look at it so just submit what's asked and aptitude test we only need for law and medicine for law we need the lat for medicine we need the ucat we don't take bmat and uh, we don't need GMAT, SAT, GRE. I know this uh, question will come up with students, so we don't accept any of those. We don't need it, and work experience is generally not needed. Uh, but for medicine courses, we need so you know community service experience, those sorts of things. But if you're applying for a course and you have work experience, then you can put it in a in a in a I would say like a explanatory way in the person statement that basically adds to your application and makes. Your application or pay more. Uh, okay, so for PG, how the entry requirements works is that we, uh, as officers, possess a list of universities. So we categorize Indian universities, uh, Indian degree awarding universities, into three broad categories, which is highly prestigious, prestigious, and recognized. Now, with this equivalence, uh, you can check on the website. So, for example, universities like Mumbai University, Delhi University are on in the highly prestigious category. Prestigious will be, uh, say, IB University. Recognized will be Amity University, etc. You can always drop us an email on the email ID that I'll share with you to check your particular university where it falls, and then based on that, uh, it's decided that you know. Uh, but usually, the range is. Um, Say from sixty to about seventy percent, but depending on what category of university is it, also for what course you are applying for. So some courses on the website will say 
you need a high two one. Some will say you need two is two ones. For example, just to explain this a little, uh, if you are from Delhi University and you're applying to a course that's competitive and that says you need a high two one, then you will need a sixty five percent. Now again, a lot of students tell us that you know DU does not give that kind of marks and all of those uh, things, but. the team has researched to get this equivalence and this is something that we follow strictly so uh, that also gives you some aspect about the competitiveness of the university so uh, that is there and uh, for post graduate applications we do not accept english language test every post grad application irrespective of you if you did your school in from ib or if you did your under graduation from du or uh, Or any other place, you will have to give the post uh, the English language test form. Usually, the the IELTS and you can give IELTS to follow the PTE and the band is also mentioned on the course page. But usually, with IELTS, we need a seven overall and six point five in each section. Aptitude test I've already discussed with you. Uh, so for only for medicine, we have interviews and the interviews are in MMI format, which is a multiple mini interview. Uh, also for law, if you if you're applying for law, LNAT is a very very important component. It's always you that for medicine. So be uh, be uh, I mean work on it and get a good score. And again, uh, some questions that might come up is what is a good LNAT or a UCAT score? We don't publish that. Uh, it's also subjective each year depending on the cohort. Uh, so that's not something that we publish. But what I can say is that. It it uh is an important component, and again, with some questions that I get is you know what is more important in an application, etc. One part or the other, which is more important. So we we don't have anything of that sort. All our applications are judged holistically. So you might have or you might exceed the minimum number of uh percentage that we need, but still not get an offer because it maybe your personal statement wasn't up to the mark, uh, or your LOAs weren't impressive enough. So. Uh, we judge all applications holistically, and which is why it's important that you focus on all the components of your uh, application rather than just obsessing over say marks or personal statement, etc. But having said that, meeting the minimum entry requirements is a prerequisite. Even if you have an exceptional personal statement, but you don't meet the minimum scores, then it will not be considered. So, for a postgraduate application. You have to apply directly on the website through the uh, apply dot kcl uh, link. It's easily available on the website, and um, usually you need transcripts, two references, statement of purpose, English language test. English language test, like I said, can also be submitted later before coming to the UK, of course, uh, but uh, not necessarily needed while you are submitting your application. Uh, we've opened our postgraduate applications for this year. They start in October. Usually, the deadline is March end. Uh, So and uh, also with uh, application processing time, uh, UCAS of course there's a there's an absolute deadline that that comes in and we have to give our results before that. But uh, usually it's six to eight weeks. Um, also sometimes I'm more busier than others, so sometimes it also takes two months, three months to get a decision. Which is why if if you are looking to apply, I would say then I think by December is a good time uh, to apply. Uh, so that I mean. and even if you apply sooner and again this will also come up in questions i know that if you if you apply sooner than the deadline is there any benefit honestly there is no such benefit uh you might get a decision sooner but that also depends on uh, so some applications are very very um, strong applications they get a decision sooner but for most of the applications the team waits for the deadline so that all applications come in so that they can assess those but there is no concept of early decision etc that's all us concepts it does not apply to uk so every application submitted before the deadline will have equal consideration so uh, i mean all i can say is apply at a comfortable time so that there is no last minute technical glitches or uh, you know i've seen so many or times the payment doesn't go through uh, because it's 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 very heavy on the website etc so just be mindful of that uh just some bits on the personal statement so uh, usually it's 4000 characters and with you, so because we have both audience here so for ug you have to apply through uk as where you have five choices and only one personal statement so don't mention university names i would say focus on the course for pg it's good to mention it in a university specific way because you have to write one for each university so you can be more specific and uh, uk person statements are academic focus about say 80 to 90% should be academic and uh, e skills and competency should be mentioned uk person statements are reflective so 
even if you've done anything extracurricular etc just link it back to the course i would say and uh, i mean personal circle is a huge session but i won't get into so much detail but just be reflective and only put in relevant things because uh, i mean uh, also for pg count just check the personal circle count on the course page usually and for ug it's absolute 4000 characters pg might vary from one course to the other in sometimes so just check that out uh structuring of course i'll just put some base it should be four to five paragraphs go into a good conclusion just one tip there don't obsess about the introduction first just get on to the main content because i see a lot of students wasting their time to get that perfect introduction and they uh, i mean it takes so many days to it and then they don't come on the main content to structure the main body first and then i'd suggest go to the end to end conclusion uh basically your personal statement should reflect your motivation uh interest to study uh it should be a genuine personal statement to plagiarize if plagiarism is a big offense in the uk don't copy don't lie or exaggerate i would say so just some ways there and i'm sure your counselors are there to help you with this as well so um yeah this we've covered with uk i mean you're applying to a uk university so focus on uk set of spellings rather than us set of spellings i would say in relevant quotes i see a lot of indian students using this there's no need to do that don't mention things in a in a shopping list kind of a format uh, also i'm just being mindful of time you know so i'll try to finish in another 15 or uh, 5 minutes so that we have some time for questions don't mention in the shopping list kind of a format of what all you've done like bullet points that doesn't help and don't absolutely waste your characters uh, uh, saying how great the university is honestly we know how great we are we put it all on our website we don't need to hear it from you because the person statement has to be about you a lot of students forget that it's called personal statement for a reason because it has to be person unique to you don't copy a personal statement that uh, your cousin used to get through or your school seniors used to get through the admissions team reads tons and tons of personal statements in a day and they very very easily recognize uh, i mean uh, if it's a genuine or if it's not a genuine personal statement also plagiarism is a big offense every year i see uh, students getting warning emails from ucas that it's a plagiarized person statement so don't even try doing that uh, it's it's you will get notified it is not a good thing so yeah also informal language punctuation we all live in millennial or post millennial generation where we're so used to instagram whatsapp etc so we just tend to use of these kind of languages you will never get the person statement right in the first draft don't even put that expectation on you but what i'll say start on time so that you can get multiple drafts uh write a person statement read it to yourself record and listen to it so that you know you know what's not sounding right what needs to change etc so show it to somebody you trust your friend your parents your teachers counselor professors whoever and then they'll be able to help you just some bits of personal statements make a list of your qualities and skills and see what interests you but at the same time also see what does not interest you for example i never like maths as a student right so i pretty well knew that maths is not the set of courses that i would want to study so at the same i mean as much as you want to document the things you like doing also document the things you don't like doing because kings alone has say about 200 courses now if you're looking at say even five universities you have about 1000 courses to choose from then how do you boil down to to those four five choices so then it's important to know yourself for that ask yourself trivial questions what you enjoy doing what you don't enjoy doing what interests you what are your extra particular interests etc again choose what's relevant and important because uh, the character count is a hard count what you do google has <coughs> so google has so many important bits of information uh, you can always check for templates etc but don't exactly copy those just take reference from those uh, speak to current students really important so we have a unibody chat feature on the website if you open the things website there will be a pop up box that comes at the bottom right corner just there are students from different courses different geography so to speak we can't share student details because we are very strict with gdpr guidelines but you can talk to students for example if you're looking at a if you're looking to apply for law or business and you can talk to a law student or a business student as to how they factored in their process and what they they do uh, uh, that help them etc also another a good way to write your personal statement is go on the course page and see the course contents and then you'll see what's expected out of you right and then you can link it back or pack but integrate it also all of this is important that you start this on time so that you have so for example if you've just entered your final year uh, 
and you see a business course and you see there is a lot of um, emphasis on say for example business strategy etc you can do an additional online course or a virtual internship or something that will bridge that gap but all of this is possible if you give yourself enough time and not start just one month before the deadline right so do you have to read discuss with friends patient fee uh, this is updated now so this is this one's not very very updated medicine is close to about 44 45000 now so for the exact course fees course fees is the best place but usually the range is say, 30 to 35 lakhs on an average for your institution fees and of course medicine set of course is a more expensive living expenses is about 15 lakhs a year but of course depends on the lifestyle you choose to live scholarship kings is not very and again i know this will come up in questions kings is not very very generous with scholarship uh, they they release a few scholarships of course they're more for pg than ug and they start getting updated on the website uh, things in november and december i would say so just check that out and uh, but focus on uh, external organizations or third party organizations that provide scholarships so for example usually the british council website has a comprehensive list last year hsbc had a scholarship etc so just check those out and see what's relevant to you and what matches uh, about your... traveling scholarship yeah yeah so all of that is accepted but yeah it's third party scholarship so that is there but with king scholarship and again i know this question will come up that you know yeah. how do we apply with scholarship etc so every scholarship would be different so some will be automatically given some will be on merit etc that will be given next to the scholarship on the website so just read through those details and also the person who is administrating that particular scholarship will have the details says so if you have any questions you can ask but you must be an applicant uh, to get the scholarship, scholarship. Yeah. Yeah. an excellent scholarship applications open from 1st of november is it right now it's showing closed Some which one is asked excellent scholarship available I for 10000 pounds i won't know that particular detail but uh, i think you can check where that's published i guess all right so, yeah. the comment it is pretty much the last bit of the presentation so okay so there are it, many questions which have been asked from the students about different courses about ielts about application waiver so can we go about it or you want to continue with this accommodation this last bit is there uh, just to answer your question on application waiver we don't have any application waiver so yeah uh with accommodation we have 10 halls of residences and intercollegiate halls is where all university of london students stay together of course price is very and there's also a lot of private residences available because it's centrally located there's a case of flat may find a group on facebook you can look that so various options available student support again these are international support disability counseling all of this is available but the last bit is the personal tutor so every student gets assigned a personal tutor so you can reach out to the personal tutor for your academic needs pastoral needs if you're missing home you need a friend anything with academics if you finding difficult so every person every student will get a personal tutor so they are treated like a friend uh, at kings Right, so that's the end of the presentation. Uh, Unibody, of course, I've spoken to you about. But you, if you have any questions, then you can always drop us an email on the India email ID, and we will get back to you. It's, it's India at the rate kcl dot ac dot uk. Also, the link that will be shared. If you want to be in touch, then you can use that link. So I'll stop okay. sharing my screen now. Great, thank you so much, Pala, for such an informative in uh, presentation so, you have given. while you are also not well <laughs> that's more mm-hmm. important for i you. think that's good because i have spoken less today otherwise and otherwise you would surpass an hour also so yeah <laughs> right i really do understand so we have already uh, gone through a lot of information on the deadlines on also you've spoken about the scholarship which one of the student have recently asked again and uh, the average acceptance so i'll keep on asking certain question which are more important for us most of the other student other questions have been answered already so uh, first question is if a student has been already applied once for one program can he reapply or can he apply for an alternate course during the application under the ucas no so have you applied a year before or you applied that particular year in the same application can we yeah. apply for so there are two different choices so then it will be counted as two different choices so out of five you lose two choices right and the first preference will be given to the first app- first course you have applied to no no nothing like that All right. So the student will get both the offer letters. If yes, perfect. Does the work experience help while the application assessment is being done for the engineering courses or for the business schools? 
it makes your application stronger i would say but the caveat there is that you have to mention it in a way that say don't just list it that you've done this you have to be reflective and say that how that's added value to your application so if if i'm applying for a business course and if i've done a internship you know in a startup or managed say uh, their international business or strategy or sales or business development whatever so then you have to be reflective and say that this particular experience added this value and then a good way to do this like i said is check the course content and see you know what the university focuses on what's what is expected out of that particular student in that uh, studying that particular course uh, that is the correct way to put it of course it adds value because it that's how you uh, you know you uh, cut through the noise i would say and then you know that's how your applications become It's stronger because basically yeah because the, the kind of quality applications that we get i think pretty much everybody meets the entry requirement so that is not something that will get you an offer mm. so. right okay there is another student just have asked about the same question without an experience will there be a, a opportunity for a business program i don't have an experience no that is right it's not mandatory but then instead of an experience and you should focus on things like doing an online course reading a book ted talk podcast there's just so much to do so it's it's not necessary that you that you only do an internship but there's so many other things to make your application stronger but i would say if you if you've done nothing then then i i don't know a way to make your application stronger but uh, you have to you know probably just just uh, just mention any article on business that that's sparked interest or any book if you read a steve job books or if you followed any particular uh, business uh, section in newspapers or magazines and just just those bits okay so another question is if a if an application was unsuccessful for the last year for the masters program can we reapply for the next year yeah okay uh what is an application fee is very important <laughs> for ucas it's i think for 22 20 pounds for a course and then and it uh, till about two courses and then if you have five there's something of that sort or I, for I for subject for yeah for subject yeah for post grad it's uh, about, between say 70 to 100 pounds it's just revised this year so i don't know the very exact one but it's 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 a range so different for different mm-hmm. courses so that will be on the websites but close to about say 70 to 100 pounds uh, and you can if, uh, for a follow up question if there's any you can also apply to multiple um, post graduate right, courses right. they count but they have to be individual different applications right, right. so there is a student who has asked a question can we change or switch to the fields while i am into the science field can i change to the management field is there a problem while the application has been done Oh, you have to justify it in, in the sense that what sparked your interest uh, in your personal sector. So why you want to do that course, and uh, but just check, you know, if certain if certain management courses need like prerequisite subjects, and if you've done those subjects, usually I think with management is okay, but it's vice versa with science. It need need quantitative subjects of physics, chemistry, bio, but I don't think the switch. by so was is a problem but if you are if you are meeting the entry requirements with course uh, preferences and required courses etc then i think that's okay uh, right. but yeah just just be mindful of how you present this in your personal statement because there is not going to be an interview and then that is the personal statement is pretty much the best shot to hmm. explain that why you are a right fit and uh, for the university right there is another question which has been just come up you have already answered this although i uh, just want to repeat that uh if i'm in the final year can i still apply for the masters yeah. program for the next year yeah you will get a full fee so even time. yeah you get a conditional offer you have to meet those conditions uh with your final scores and then you get an unconditional offer so the conditional offers have been given on two two bases one is the basis of an ielts if it is required and the second one is what i understand is the final year mark sheets as well any other the conditions which is possible usually it's offer? just that usually, usually it's just that yeah. i hope that is also answered Can I uh, just give me one minute? Um, is there any additional value a German language or a European language adds on on the applications or writing? If you are applying for those sort of courses, otherwise, I mean, if, if you are applying to the courses that that might need those, for example, a cultural media course or in uh, European German law course, etc., just send them that. Okay. Is there any GRE GMAT required for the MS programs? No. No. it has already been clear that there is no gre gmat required there is one question about llb uh, what is an examination required is it mandatory to give lcat is it sorry 
What yes. is the additional examination which is required? Yes. Is it L9. mandatory to give? Yes. L9. Uh, yes. Is it required to give the applic LNAT before the application has been completed or uh, after the completion of the application, we can submit these courses? It's a, uh, it's a J date in January, I think yes. 15th or some, some, I think 15th yeah. January, that's the last date you have to submit your LNAT course. Code. LNAT course. Uh, okay, uh, there is another question which one of the students has asked. I have five years gap uh, and few KTs as well, which means the backlogs. How many backlogs are accepted for the engineering courses? And, I wouldn't uh, suggest you to apply if you have a backlog because Kings is, is very particular yeah, about it. Yeah. So yeah. if you have with, a backlog with the gap years, not accepted. Gap years is okay. Uh, as long as it justifies to what you did in those gap mm -hmm. years and you know what you made out of it. So mature students' gap years is not uh, is not a problem, but backlog is a problem. Okay. Uh, okay. So there is another question. Do I need a research proposal to apply for a clinical psychology program, doctorate in clinical psychology? For all PhD programs, how it functions is that it's a little different from UG and PG. So there is this platform called KCL Pure. Uh, just go on that and all the researches that are uh, happening will be listed there. So uh, just check that out. And if you if there's something that interests you, there will be the professor. So the professor who's taking that uh, on administrating or monitoring that research you mentioned then get in touch with the professor if the professor is happy to mentor you only go ahead and then make a formal application we don't uh, i mean first don't make an application first speak to the professor and then go ahead and make it and applications of a phd happen four times in a year so that is um, there. all right perfect i think most of the questions have been answered there are a few more questions which has just come up just give me one second let me just open the chat again okay uh, so i hope that clinical courses have been over uh, and for PhD, the process is very clear that you require a proposal and the students should be an experience. Uh, is there any, okay, there is no MBA offered for KCL. Uh, what are the alternative courses which are available for MBA? MSc. So don't, MBA, MSc are just nomenclature differences from different uh, countries. So for example, India has MBA, PGDM, PGPM, uh, uh, UK probably will have uh, MSc, etc. So don't go with that nomenclature difference i think focus more on course content so it doesn't matter if if you're doing an mba or an msc etc like as long as it's from a good recognized university as long as the course content is something that aligns with what you want to do and interest you then don't don't get obsessed with that I think. what is the application deadline for the undergraduate students it's the ucas deadline i think this year is 26th of january 26th of january yes and how about the postgraduate students it's usually March end, end week of March. Uh, so I think it's 26th or 31st of March this year. Yeah. But just end March. Or but don't wait till okay. the end. There I are certain say. right. There are certain courses which are which they say that it's showing online studies. Can we still apply for those programs or we should look at study mode as full time? If you're a working profession, if you're okay and you don't want to leave your job then sure. But I usually uh, I think if you're if you want that full exposure, then it's better. If you can't do, if you can afford, if you can leave your job, then it's it's better to go full time. It's better. Okay. Uh, so when is the application open for postgrad? Postgrad. It's just it started. It started last week. Last week itself. So I think most of the questions are already been answered. I don't think so. Any particular questions are being left? Uh, can we have the university? Questions are almost answered. Uh, the applications has already started. Uh, what about the personal statement? So there is an important question again come up. How important is the personal statement in the application? So first I'll like I to answer this. this question. Yes. So uh, apart from what Palak has already informed and she's given a very brief understanding about what all things to be included. Uh, you can also go on the website where a lot of information is given what is expected in the personal statement. Also, Manya provides a separate editing uh, editing services wherein we have professionals to support you with the editing editing uh, service wherein they'll help you to ensure what is to be written. We'll do a proper brainstorming session with you guys to make you understand what is the requirement of the university and what all things should be incorporated while you're writing the SOPs and the personal statement. So please ensure that you get in touch with Manya advisors to get you help and assistance with the editing services. And if you require any additional support with the applications. Uh, one small question again, is there any minimum backlogs? If you have a backlog, uh, Palak has already said that there is, we don't recommend we don't, you if you have yeah, a backlog. It's a, again, it's a new, you can go ahead and apply. I won't say that you don't, but usually the courses are so, 
so competitive that uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, also, with personal statements, UCAS has a has a great personal statement builder uh, tool. So you can use that to build your personal statement. It, uh, so how UK personal statements work is just it's a blank canvas of four thousand characters. So uh, you use that, but UCAS usually has uh, a personal statement building tool. You can use that, and of course, you can also reach out to your customers. Okay. Also, there is another question. One question student is asking again for the masters. Uh, for the masters clinical pharmacology, uh, what? How can I make my application strong enough to ensure that there is a chances of an admission? So, like I said, it's not about the course specific thing. I've given you major things on how you can work on your application. Mm. Just go on the course page first and see what. What's taught? What's the course about? There'll be career testimonials there, and then course content is there. See what kind of uh, uh, subjects are they preferring? Is there anything particular with experience that needs to encompass all of those things? Right. So, uh, just last question from one of the other students. Uh, Devya, there is no requirement of an MSc Finance GMAT. There is no GMAT requirement or GRE requirement for King's College. No SAT requirements for the UG students. I hope that has been answered again and again. Uh, we just want to understand for Shevning Scholarship. There's one of the students who has asked this. We require an unconditional admit, although the application deadline is second November. How can we meet those deadlines? And do you know anything on uh, the application for it? That yes, unfortunately, no. I don't have much details on it. Uh, but you drop me an email on the internet, and I can check this for you because I know students take Shevning, but I don't know how do they. Uh, meet the second November deadline because it's uh, I mean to get a result by second November I don't think that's possible. Yeah. What is the uh, what is the expected uh, outcome uh, turnaround time for an application? Six to eight you? weeks at least. Six to eight weeks for UG and PG. At least, right? at least that's the least I would say. But sometimes it also mm. takes two months. Right. Months. And how do we get to know which university is highly prestigious in India? Like one student has asked about the Mumbai University, another is asking about the Kolkata University. We so only have Delhi that University. Interest. Yeah, so Delhi, Mumbai are in the prestigious, a highly prestigious category. We possess that list. So, if there's anything individually you want to know about your university, you can drop me an email. Uh, we don't publish this list anywhere, so I anyway, will right. be able to tell you that. You can get in touch with Manya, uh, Manya advisors as well to know about your eligibility requirements for King's College if you if you meet the requirements. Also, you have uh, email ID which uh, Palak has already shared, uh, right? And I think thank you so much. All the questions have been answered. Uh, I hope this was a wonderful session. Thank you. Uh, everyone for coming in the session. We'll have a, another session and our advisors will get in touch with you in the next three days uh, to all individual participants to ensure that if you have any queries, we will help you apply to King's College London and clear all your doubts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, everyone. For thank you. And taking out yeah. time. Thank you, Bumika. Thank Take you, everyone. Care of thank you. Yeah, thank have you. Bye. Bye, bye bye. Take care, everyone. So there are certain students who've been asking about this query. There are no backlogs, not usually suggested. One or two backlogs, you can still apply, right? So I hope those questions have been answered. We have already winded up this session. Let us know and get in touch with Manya as an advisor. We have our email ID and contact details. You can get in touch with Manya services for additional information on, uh, on any of the informations by Manya. Please ensure that the sessions can be completed. And also, uh, we provide the editing services. King's College London applications can be filed by Manya as a services. Our advisors will get in touch with you once again. You can drop in your text. Uh, also, register for the free counseling sessions if you really wish for. Hope you had a great evening today. Uh, all the best for the future. Thank you so much. We'll see you again on the other session.